All right, this morning uh, we're uh, talking with a former Flower Mound basketball player named Elijah Dukes. Elijah, remind me, what year did you graduate? It's been three or four years now. Yeah, class of 2016. Class of 2016. Give everybody an overview uh, of, of, of the years you played, the, uh, where you are now, and what you're doing. Yeah. So I played on varsity my senior year, but I was with the program all four years. And I am now a student at OU, majoring in philosophy, interestingly enough. So it's been a lot of fun. Love being in Norman. Miss Flyer Mount a lot, though. Yeah, yeah. Now, you're also really active uh, in a local church there or a church plant, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Is that correct? I am. Yeah, I actually serve as a pastoral resident at a church called the Well Church in Moore, Oklahoma, which is where all the F5 tornadoes have exactly. gone through. Right, right. So it's been a lot, a lot of fun, learning a lot, so getting we, to preach some, so it's been really fun. Right. So, Elijah, will you uh, end up in the ministry, or what will you do after college? What's your plan? Yeah, that's the that's definitely the goal. That's what I'm working towards. So fantastic, good for you, man. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, tell me, what does it mean to you to be a Flower Mound basketball player? Yeah, I think that's such a great question because I I don't think a lot of programs can really answer that super well, especially a high school program. And what's incredible about I think Flower Mound's program is that there there is a a team atmosphere and a culture that extends beyond just your four years. So I think, Coach, you've done such a good job of establishing this culture. And being a Flower Mound basketball player is knowing that there is truly a family with you your entire life and that I can still be invested in what's going on in the guys' lives that are playing right now because I people like where I'm at now we're invested in where we were when we were playing. Right, right. You mentioned, it's interesting, you use this word, and I, I promise the folks who are listening to these um, these interviews, I don't coach the guys up on using the word family, but everybody I've spoken to, you're the fifth guy I've spoken to. I've talked to Brett Bell, Adam Dworsky, Jake Fikert, Christian Edmondson. Uh, you're the fifth guy. Every guy has mentioned the word family during the course of the interview. Uh, can you elaborate upon what that means in terms of being part of a basketball family and uh uh, what that means in terms of playing time, in terms of your role on the team, and quite yeah. honestly, the role that our parents played in helping us create that family environment. Yeah, yeah. So I think the the concept of family is so important for Flower Mound because everyone plays a role within a family, and it's the same around our program. But the reason everyone can play a role is because there's something bigger than just me. Mm. That's and great. that I know that also that the people around me are going to continue to support and love me and encourage me in my unique role in the midst of a greater vision for what a family can do. Right. Where So where I think that's so awesome for Flower Mound is I wasn't the guy that was going to play 40 minutes a game or 32 minutes a game. Right. And it, rather, I was, I was the guy who was going to be more encourage the guys and – build a culture and really try to be invested in guys on and off the court. Right, right. And so I think that's a role for some guys. I think where parents kind of fit in the equation is parents in a in a basketball program can go one of two ways. Either they can <laughs> think their kids the star and they need to play every minute. Right. Or you can be the parent that's going to be supportive of the greater vision for the family and for the team no matter what whether or not that means your son is playing a ton or not and I think having parents that are invested in the vision of winning rather than in the vision of their son getting a D1 scholarship is so critical for success right and I think b big things come out of that right it's interesting that you, you talk about that Elijah I wasn't really planning on chasing this but I'm going to go with this just a little bit that group of guys that you played with and graduated with in 2016 uh uh, how many seniors were on that team? Do you know off the top of your head? I lose track of, of, Gosh. of six, seven, eight, I'm guessing. There, there were several seniors that just yeah. didn't, didn't play a lot of minutes but played a huge role in our success. And I've told coaches for, uh, for the last 10 years, and we're in our eighth year here, the secret to our success have been our seniors who didn't play a lot of minutes and their parents. I've said that for eight years. Yeah. The secret to our success have been the seniors who, who – 
didn't get the accolades, didn't get the recognition, didn't get all the attention, and their parents because they uh, embodied this selflessness and the sacrificial hearts that we want everybody to, to display. Uh, what, what caused you and your teammates? I think Jack Miller. Is Jack Miller a 2016 guy? Is he younger than you? I think he's a bit younger. Okay, and Freddie Jackson and uh, Jacob Oseman. Yeah, all these guys are younger than you. Uh, but, but what caused you guys to buy into that? What caused you guys to accept that role and to be these servant leaders the on the team? Me, okay. So, so what caused you guys to, to buy into that? What caused you guys to, Im- to embrace that? Yeah, man, I think a couple things. One, like I genuinely loved the guys I played with. Uh, any, Like any family, there's siblings quarrel, right. and <laughs> there's a need to get back on track to the bigger tr- picture, but I genuinely love those guys and loved playing with them and it, seeing even now what they're up to and their successes. Right, right. And then I think, two... I think it's just so critical to know that it's really not about me. Mm. And high school ball is for four years. Right. It's really not the end of the world if you're not the star. Like, there's just so much more to life. But because I know there's more to life than just me being a star, mm. I can actually invest more into the team because I it doesn't have to be about me and making me look awesome. Uh, I love that. Well, that, that, that's who you are, too, though. You, you grew up in a family that really emphasized... Uh, things bigger than what we see here in the in the in the earthly flesh, right? Yeah. And, yep. And so, so you yep. embrace that 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 idea that we're here for a purpose, and uh, you yeah. embodied that more than anybody I ever know. Hey, what would your message be? And I, I'm staying with this line because this wasn't where I was planning on going, but you've mentioned this twice. You've used the phrase "bigger than me." The, 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 it's bigger than me. It's not about me. What message would you give to guys in our program right now? and guys that are coming up in our program who probably don't play as much or who won't play as much, uh, what would you say to those guys? Yeah. I think habits are so key to success. And thinking about it from a team perspective, everyone on the team's habits matter. You, you just don't build a good program unless everyone's building habits of success, taking every drill extremely seriously and giving it their all whether or not they are going to play or not. Right. And I think when you know that it's bigger than me mm. and you're dedicated to your team's success, practicing as hard as you can, being the biggest encourager on the team, and can, not getting a bad attitude, you're going to have bad days, but that doesn't have to turn into a bad attitude, period. Right. It's really critical and contributes dividends towards championships and playoffs yeah hey so tell me this what do you know now that you wish you would have known when you played here yeah man one thing i wish i had known is how much i miss (laughs) flyer mountain basketball (laughs) like it's hard to think in the middle of those four years when you're playing basketball all the time that one day that's not going to be the case anymore right and it, you, you don't have that opportunity at a certain point. And so I wish I had in the middle of practice and in the middle of this program taken the opportunity just to enjoy it more okay. and really to – like I loved being there, but I, I wish I had actually kind of sought out even more opportunities to be invested in the program as much as I could. Right, right. So how can current and future players – represent the program in a positive way yeah well listen to this guy first of all that's nice he knows a thing or two about (laughs) basketball and even more about life and i think on top of that the biggest way to contribute to success is to take to take your teammates seriously that what their what their long-term vision for their life is what their hopes and dreams are and then also to take the goal of building a culture of family very seriously and to know that that doesn't mean you have to get along perfectly every day but there is going to be sorries to go around and there's a genuine want for everyone to succeed inside the program right right so tell me uh, elijah what one thing contributed most uh, to our success during your years of playing here at flyer mount high school yeah that's a great question 
I think. Well, we ran, we ran some really up and down games, like where it was three and D all the way, right? And we left going really fast, and so from a very pragmatic perspective, I think conditioning was a really big one for us, right? But I think more vision wise, it was just knowing that the guys under me, so AD, Ryan Richter, all these guys, <laughs> Colton, yes, okay, all these guys. I wanted to see them ex- succeed, and I wanted to see the team succeed. And if that meant developing younger guys younger than me, and they were going to take my time, that's okay. Wow. And continuing to know that the program again was greater than me. You know, you you say if they take time from me, that's okay. Um, that brings tears to my eyes because um, uh, I, I I'll say it till the day I die. Uh, I, I still believe the key, the secret to our success, Elijah, have been guys like you uh, and families like yours who went through the program, who didn't get the awards, who didn't get the accolades, who didn't get their names in the paper, who weren't getting a lot of attention in terms of playing, but um, embodied and displayed the selfless spirit that uh, pervades our program now. So I, I, I'm grateful to you for that. Hey, uh, I'm curious. Once again, I'm chasing a rabbit here a little bit. What uh, you're going to go into the ministry, and I have yep. a, a lot of dear friends who are ministers across the country, guys that I grew up with, and uh, we talk a lot about the similarities between our jobs. What lessons did you learn uh, from the Flyermount basketball family that you think you might be able to apply in your in your calling uh, as a minister? Yeah, I think a lot. So one way is just people matter more than a game. <laughs> Okay, and I think Flyer Mountain basketball did a great job of, of bringing that culture alive. And I think another is just show up every day. Like there, there's some days where I just don't, I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> and one of the great things about being involved in Flyer Mountain basketball is there was a there was an aura of professionalism that was in place in the program in a really cool way that kind of left me more dedicated towards showing up day in, day out in life and, and giving my all. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Hey, listen, uh, here's your chance to, um, to create the question and answer the question. The last one I have for you, what do you want current and future players at Flower Mound High School to know? Or is there anything else that we didn't touch upon that you want to leave uh, our, our listeners with before we go today? Yeah, maybe just one is, I think the guy, like, if you know my story, I was on, I came into Flyer Mound, wasn't in one of the middle schools that fed into Flyer Mound, hmm. so didn't honestly have the best chance at making the team from day one. Right. Like, I just didn't, I didn't know the program in and out. Right. And hard work matters a lot more than you think. Hmm. I know everyone says hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. There's a, there's a certain amount of truth to that and dedication and showing up every day, whether you're the best and you've been around the program for forever or whether you're not the guy that's been around the program for forever is so critical to success. Yeah. And you can earn a spot through a lot of other ways than just being the best guy on the court. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we've had, uh, uh, over the last eight years, had a lot of great guys come through here and we've had a lot of guys that we love dearly. But on a very personal note, uh, my, you know, I have three. My kids are. I don't know if you know this, Elijah. You're, you're, you'll you'll roll your eyes, but Isaac and Solomon are now in the high school, and so it's hard to believe, right? Uh, okay, I saw he's an author now. Like I'm, <laughs> I just love seeing it. But Isaac, um, my uh, Elijah Dukes was always my Isaac's favorite, and uh, uh, every time Isaac was in the room, in the house, in the weight room, in the gym, Elijah was over there talking to Isaac, and Isaac just loved. This, this beautiful heart that Elijah displayed for our program and for, our, for his teammates. And uh, uh, you could put Elijah's face up next to the name Flyer Mom Basketball and put it in the dictionary, and you embody everything that's good about our program, Elijah. Hey, man, I love you. Thanks, Coach. I love your family. And yeah. uh, be sure to tell your whole family that I said hello. Yeah, will do. Love you, Coach. Okay.